Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today we are once again working on our Viking Link cosplay. Just to reiterate it from the last time, no, this is not an accurate build to either the Vikings nor to Link and the Zelda series. It is a random amalgamation of stuff and me mixing and matching and tweaking things to fit the design and motif that I am going for. So today, we have currently, as of today, made the shield, the sword, and the axe. And I thought, why not move on to a couple of the armor pieces for the next couple of builds? And uh, I really want to build this helmet. I did build a Viking helmet a while back, and it was given to Adam Savage, of all people. Um, it is in Adam Savage's man cage, which just continues to blow my mind that that's a prop that a legend like him owns and he was happy to get it. Um, there's a video on Tested about him receiving it. And I wanted to just kind of use that template, but then go insane with the details and make it Link-esque, Zelda-esque. Uh, sure. So today we are building a Viking Link helmet. Let's get to building. I started by pulling out my template from my first Viking helmet and cut out the parts that I needed. I did modify the size a little by cutting like three-fourths of an inch off the bottom of the base, but overall the underlying structure was the same as previous. I traced it onto some 6mm foam and cut out the pattern with a hobby knife. The helmet top parts need a little help going into shape, so I heat form them with my heat gun. By pushing the foam over a round object, it helps the EVA get closer to its final shape and allows for less stress on the seams. This will limit the amount of gaps once we glue up everything, though I'm not too worried because the overlays that I plan on doing will pretty much cover up most of those seams. Top assembly is pretty simple. I put some contact cement on all the edges and let them sit for a few minutes until the glue is no longer wet. I like to close the darts up first, then following the registration marks on the sides, I line the parts up together. Once all this was tacked together, I made a inch and a half strip of four millimeter foam, the circumference of my head, and glued that to the inside of this helmet base. The face mask gets glued to the front of the helmet. You probably won't be able to see it, but I have a little mark on the middle of the center of the nose piece there to help me line it up with the seam line. I also went ahead and marked out where it'll lay on the band. Both parts have contact cement on them in those areas and get joined together. Thank you. 
On my last version, I had a dragon run along the center of my helmet. I really liked how that looked, so I decided to put a Zelda spin on it instead. There's a character called Malgara, which is similar in vibe. It's like a horned worm thingy that you fight in the Wind Waker Zelda game. I have a big chunk of 36mm EVA that I'm going to carve the head, then the body and the tail spike will be using some EVA dowels. I draw an outline carve off chunks to get it closer to the shape and then switch over to my rotary tool to get it to its final shape. The little details on the face were made with a wood burner. Make sure to wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area while burning or sanding foam. Dust and fumes aren't pleasant to your lungs so protect yourself. Once I had the carving done, I put on some contact cement to the parts and then carefully tacked them into position. Like I said before, most of the seams will be covered with either detailed panels or half dowels. This big one I believe is 24 millimeters and the small ones that you will see magically appear in a few minutes are 10 millimeter half dowels. I spent about five hours drawing up these characters on my iPad. They're all bosses from the Wind Waker game. I found some icon images from the game that had these nice little swirl patterns in them. There's roughly, I think, three of them. So I tweaked them a little bit and then did basically the same style with the other bosses. Then I converted them to an SVG file to use on my Glowforge. I made these trapezoids to fit them on the helmet giving me a general size of where I needed them to position, but also accounting for a little bit of extra room because I'm going to have to trim them. It took less than 45 minutes and I had these awesome detailed panels that I could add to my build. I really do love using the laser cutter for these intricate details that would take me a ridiculous amount of time to do by hand. I arranged them in the areas I wanted them to go and then trimmed each a little bit to fit better into the frame by itself, putting a number on the back to keep them straight and in order. I did a similar thing to the top triangular patterns and pulled from Norse mythology depicting Odin's eight-legged horse, his two ravens, Fenrir, and the world serpent to top it all off. That was another couple of hours. I ended up pulling these eight Zelda panels off and recutting them deeper. To get them off, you just simply heat it up on both sides of the foam and carefully peel it off without trying to rip it and mess your entire build up. <laughs> To 
to add the ear guards on, I needed to give myself a solid platform opposite of the face mask so that it could sit level. I cut a little chunk of the same 4mm foam and tacked it onto the band. Then I tacked the ear guards on top. I didn't show a lot of the adding of detail parts because it's basically a similar process. I glued on 10mm EVA dowels around most of the parts and then made my detail bits to fit within those parameters. My original didn't have these little brow details that a lot of Viking style helmets did back in the day so I thought I'd go ahead and add them. I also thought that it would make the eye shape a little more interesting than straight across. So I put my respirator on, drew on some lines to my detail bit, and then burned them in with my wood burner. I sanded away any foam globs with a sanding stick and tacked them into place. I ended up adding some detail bits to the rest of the face mask and a panel for each of the ear guards while I was at it. In total, I probably spent 10 or 12 hours on my iPad drawing up detail bits to then cut in foam on my laser cutter. Now, depending on the time period within the Viking Age, the helmets varied quite a bit. The most simple was basically what I started off the build with, just the base. Then adding ear guards and face guards and all that came over time gradually, as well as adding chainmail to the back and the front of the helmet. I used some EVA chainmail from Ben Eady and Stephanie Chan over at Foam Armory. Their stuff is awesome. It is perforated sheets of two millimeter foam that will simply pop out, you push out the holes, and then you weave them together to get your mail. You basically just bend the circle in half and then shove it through the next row. Once you work your way to the end, you add another until you get to the desired length. I use three or four sheets, I think, to cover the back of my neck. To secure the foam on the bottom, I added a little strip of 2mm foam to the front and back. Then I drilled some holes in with my rotary tool and I wanted to add a little lacing detail like this was a piece of leather tacked on to secure it. I used the same basic technique you see me doing here to attach it to the helmet also. Drilled holes into the base and then wove a thin strip of 2mm foam in and out to secure it. Two coats of Plasti Dip. Then I lightly misted the silver spray paint for an aged metal look. For the metallic details, I used some silver and gold rub and buff. I started with a light dry brush of the silver on all my ridges to make them stand out a little more. Then I taped off each individual panel with some painter's tape and slathered on a coat of gold. The top parts were pretty easy and went relatively quick. Those ear guards took forever to tape off. I painted that little strip at the bottom of my chainmail in a dark brown and dry brushed a lighter brown to make it look like distressed leather. Mm -hmm. 
To make all the recesses stand out a little more and really showcase all those details that I put into the panels, I hit the whole helmet with a wash of some black and brown Platifex acrylic with, you know, with a little bit of water mixed into it. I simply get it pushed down into the cracks and crevices, then wipe away the high points away with a paper towel. It took about two or three passes to get the desired amount of dirty. Once it's all dry, I glued two small strips of leather inside the ear guards to act as chin straps and I can officially call this build done. <laughs> are finished here is the end result i am so happy with the way this turned out i spent like five hours working on the decals for all of these on the side these are all enemies from the games and then i've got some ties into some viking lore up here at the top and then i did an amalgamation of blending in the two so this is part of a viking decoration with a mixed in zelda i also did that on the thor's hammer uh putting a little symbol in there if you if you know you know but um, I think it looks pretty awesome and the leather straps that I added there at the end um, just kind of set it off even more but yeah maybe you will try and make one of these yourselves and impress your friends with your ability to turn something historically based and then uh, video game based and make something super cool that's the plan maybe you'll get some yeah and inevitably, they're going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them, much props. It actually fits a lot better than the previous one, too. And if I wanted to, I could be all. Peace out. If you're digging this Viking Link mashup and want to continue to see awesome builds like this on my channel, please consider joining the legends listed here with me over on Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.